in our midst this morning, we remember from the very core part of our being who you are. We thank you for assembling us here together today. We ask for your Holy Spirit to come in an even deeper way. Touch us in every way, shape, and form. Cause our understanding to be opened with what you're doing with us in this hour. Father, we want to be everything that you want us to be, and we want to move with you. We thank you, Father, for your anointing. In Jesus' name, amen. I am super excited about our praise and worship leader because them songs was awesome, just awesome. And if you don't understand how in touch with the spirit our praise and worship leader is, this is the, the cry that is coming from the spirit realm right now. Jesus, come. People don't understand it. They don't perceive it. But this is exactly what the spirit is saying. We live in dark times right now, but the light is so strong and it is so bright. And you have to realize that that light is inside of you. And because that light is inside of you, darkness is going to attack you. But you can't quit. You can't give up. You have to keep fighting. Today we're going to be talking about why, and this is going to be something that's going to open up your eyes to why you're here, why God birthed you in this time period, in this season, and it's to help you understand what you're fighting against and what is really going on within your life. We're in a battle that we have already won against darkness but we constantly need to focus ourselves on understanding that we're in a battle. Darkness has never been receptive to the light. It, it doesn't want it. It doesn't want to accept it. It doesn't want to do what the light wants. And the sooner that we understand that as the body of believers, we can understand that the devil does not will not ever like us. The demons will not ever like us. And the things that they want to do are so bent on destruction and destroying our physical bodies. The reason they want to destroy our physical bodies through whatever it is, whatever, whatever sin has some type of effect upon your body, they want to do that because it's an affront to God. It makes God look bad. Look, look at what you created. It's fallen apart. It can't take anything. And the sooner that we see that these demons hate from the very core part of their being, and they can never be termed, then we'll understand how deep the fight is. Then we will be able to take it to them the way that they are taking it to us. They have nothing to lose because they have already lost. They already know they're going to the pits. They already know that there is no escape. There is no forgiveness for them. It's done. It's over with. When they fell, and we're going to see how they fell today, you're going to see that it was, it was a one-time deal. We have an opportunity now to repent, to stay in a place of repentance, and then stay on the right path so that we can connect with the light when everything is over with, so that we can forever be good. We can forever be holy. We can forever be righteous. And now is the time period that we do that. Now is the time period that every day we make choices to stay in the holiness of God so that when that moment comes, when Jesus comes for us and we're transformed out of this corrupted body that we're in, 
we will forever be in his light. And we don't ever have to worry about fighting against this darkness ever again. Let's look at John chapter 1, verses 1 to 5. In the beginning, before all time, was the Word, Christ. And the Word was with God, and the Word was God himself. He was continually existing in the beginning, co-eternally with God. All things were made. Listen to this. All things include darkness. All things include the devil. All things includes the devil's angels. Verse 3, all things were made and came into existence through him, and without him not even one thing was made that is come into being. In him was life and the power to bestow life. And the life was the light of men. The light shines on in the darkness, and the darkness did not understand it or overpower it or appropriate it or absorb it. In light, and darkness is unreceptive to light. You, you, you need to understand that. Darkness does not understand light. Darkness does not overpower it. Darkness does not appropriate it. I mean, it, it doesn't take it into itself. It does not absorb light, and it's unreceptive. The devil is a created being. The devil is not God. He cannot love. He can't love. He cannot be light. Ezekiel 28, verses 11 to 15. Moreover, the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Son of man, take up a lamentation for the king of Tyre and say to him, Thus says the Lord God. This is a perfect description of who the devil was created to be in his original intent. You were the seal of perfection, full of wisdom, and perfect in beauty. You were in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was your covering. The sardis, topaz, diamond, beryl, onyx, and jasper, sapphire, turquoise, and emerald with gold. The workmanship of your timbrels and pipes was prepared for you on the day you were created. You were the anointed cherub who covers. I established you. You were on the holy mountain of God. You walked back and forth in the midst of fiery stones. You were, in, you were perfect in your ways from the day you were created till iniquity was found in you. This is who the devil was before iniquity came inside of him, before iniquity manifested itself and showed itself for what it was. When you break down iniquity in this verse, this is Strong's word, H5765, evil, iniquity, perverseness, unjust, unjustly, Unrighteous, unrighteously, wickedness. It is customary to explain iniquity as meaning literally crookedness, perverseness, evil regarded as that which is not straight or upright, moral distortion. This is the devil. This is talking about who the devil is and what was found in him. But its iniquity is much deeper than this. The deeper meaning is that iniquity means to err, go astray, and consequently express the idea of error, deviation from the right path. When iniquity was found in Satan's heart, he got into error and strayed away from the intended path or purpose from God. We just read that in Ezekiel 28. He was supposed to be the anointed chair. He was supposed to have all of these wonderful things that he was doing for God. But he turned in his heart and said, nope, I don't want to do that. And we're going to see what he, what he said he was going to do. This is important to note because the same nature or error that is in the devil is in every one of the angels that fell with him. They have error, 
deviation from the truth, it denotes a brokenness that can never be fixed. A brokenness that can never be fixed. The devil and the angels that left with him cannot ever be turned back to God. They hate God and everything that God is. They cross the line that can never be recrossed. It will never be an oops, we messed up. This is why it is important for us to make sure that iniquity is not found in us. That error, that deviation from the right path. This is how it manifests in us. If you start hardening your heart to the things of God, the things of the Spirit, you can reach a point where you won't want to come back. You will not want to come back. It's not that God can't forgive you, won't forgive you. You just in your own pride, your own arrogance will say, I'm better than this. I'm better than God. I don't need God. And this is exactly what happened to Satan and the angels that were with him. Your hatred inside of you for God and the things of God will grow to such a level that you will not repent and ask God to forgive you. Ezekiel 28, verses 16 to 19. By the abundance of your trading, you became filled with violence. Demons are violent. The devil is violent. And you sinned. Therefore, I cast you as a profane thing out of the mountain of God. We, we know of the scriptures where God says that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. The wages of sin is death. Satan sinned. The devil sinned. And he was cast away from the presence of God. Go back into verse 16. By the abundance of your trading, you became filled with violence within, and you sinned. Therefore, I cast you as a profane thing out of the mountain of God, and I destroyed you, O covering cherub, from the midst of the fiery stones. Your heart was lifted up because of your beauty. You're corrupted. You corrupted your wisdom for the sake of your splendor. I cast you to the ground. I laid you before kings that they might gaze at you. You defiled your sanctuaries by the multitude of your iniquities, by the iniquity of your trading. Therefore, I brought fire from your midst. It devoured you, and I turned you to ashes upon the earth in the sight of all who saw you. All who knew you among the peoples are astonished at you. You have become a horror and shall be no more forever. These are the things that takes place when you harden your heart. These are the things that took place with Satan, with his angels, when they hardened their heart. Let's look at an in-depth version of the error that the devil got into. Isaiah 14, 12 to 21. Verse 12. How you are fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning. How you are cut down to the ground, you who weaken the nations. For you have said in your heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will also sit on the mountain of the congregation, on the farthest sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. Yet you shall be brought down to Sheol, to the lowest depths of the pit. Those who see you will gaze at you and consider you, saying, Is this the man who made the earth tremble, who shook kingdoms, who made the world as a wilderness and destroyed its cities, who did not open the house of his prisoners? All the kings of the nations, all of them sleep in glory, everyone in his own house. But you are cast out of your grave like an abominable branch, like the garment of those who are slain, thrust through with the sword, who go down to the stones of the pit like a corpse trodden underfoot. You will not be joined with them in burial because you have destroyed your land and slain your people. 
The brood of evildoers shall never be named. Prepare slaughter for his children. Because of the iniquity of their fathers, lest they rise up and possess the land and fill the face of the world with cities. This is the depths of the fall that took place for the devil. Here is a different perspective of the same event that took place when the devil was removed from heaven. And again, I want you to see, this isn't a straight timeline, but these are significant events that you need to understand that took place before you came into being, before you came into existence. And this is meant to show you why, why you're here, why God anointed you and appointed you because he needs you to help show the devil the truth about who he really is. Revelations 12, verse 7 to 9, again, a different perspective. And war broke out in heaven. Michael, the archangel, and his angels waging war with the dragon. The dragon and his angels fought, but they were not strong enough and did not prevail. And there was no longer a place found for them in heaven. And the great dragon was thrown down, the age-old serpent who is called the devil and Satan. He who continually deceives and seduces the entire inhabited world. He was thrown down to the earth and his angels were thrown down with him. They're here. They're causing torment. They're doing their destructive things that they're doing. Again, because they're trying to drag you into hell with them. They've already lost their place with God. They can never be reestablished. They can never get an opportunity to turn their hearts back to God. So their hatred that they have for God, their crookedness and their, their bent against God, they're trying to put into us. They're trying to get us to have that same mindset. Well, God doesn't care about me. He's allowing me to be sick. God doesn't care about me. He's allowing me to be poor. He's allowing me to suffer. All of these things that, that the devil whispers in our ears and, and his angels whisper in our ears, and we have to learn to say, no, that's not true. God is allowing me to suffer because he's showing his glory through me. He's allowing me to go through poverty and sicknesses because he's showing his glory through me. He, he's causing me to show I'm still going to love God no matter what. I'm not loving God because of my health. I'm not loving God because I have wealth and cars and houses and things like that. I love God just because I love God. And this is what we need to take into the streets to people. These events are real. They are all things that have happened in God's timeline of history. You need to know these things and understand what all has taken place. God is real. The good angels are real. The devil is real. The bad angels are real. The bad angels were not just content to be banished from heaven like the devil. They sought to destroy what God had created. We're going to look at Job chapter 1, verses 6 to 12. Look at this. Now there was a day when the sons of God, the bad angels, came to present themselves before the Lord and Satan. See that? Both of them also came among them. And the Lord said to Satan, from where do you come? So Satan answered and said, answered the Lord and said, from going to and fro on the earth and from walking back and forth in it. Then the Lord said to Satan, have you considered my servant Job, that there is none like him on the earth, a blameless and upright man, one who fears God and shuns evil? So Satan answered the Lord and said, does Job fear God for nothing? Have you not made a hedge around him? around his household, and around all that he has on every side. You have blessed the work of his hands, and his possessions have increased in the land. But now stretch out your hand and touch all that he has, and he will surely curse you to your face. And the Lord said to Satan, Behold, all that he has is in your power. 
only do not lay a hand on his person. So Satan went out from the presence of the Lord. You see this? You see, you see what's happening? You see why we're here? So a concept that I don't think the body of Christ at large understands, the devil and his demonic angels are going before the Lord on what seems like a regular basis. Now, Job is showing us that the devil has to ask God for permission to touch us, but is more than willing to, but God is more than willing to allow this to happen. You need to know this. You can be touched. We are in a war, and the enemy is looking for ways to prove to God that you are not going to be faithful to him. He's looking for those ways. What are you going to show him? What are you going to demonstrate to him? Let's go back to Job. We're going to go to chapter 2, and this is the second account. Verse 1, again, there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord and Satan, both demonic angels and Satan, came also among them to present himself before the Lord. And the Lord said to Satan, from where do you come? Satan answered, and the Lord said, from going to and fro on the earth and from walking back and forth on it. Then the Lord said to Satan, Have you considered my servant Job, that there is none like him on the earth, a blameless and upright man, one who fears God and shuns evil? And still he holds fast to his integrity. Although you incited me against him to destroy him without cause. So Satan answered the Lord and said, Skin for skin, yes, all that a man has, he will give for his life. But stretch out your hand now and touch his bone and his flesh, and he will surely curse you to your face. And the Lord said to Satan, Behold, he is in your hand, but spare his life. So by the fact that this was written in Job on two separate occasions, lets me know that there are two levels where God can give the devil permission to hurt you. Ball's in your court. What are you going to do with this information? We want you to see the bigger picture of what's going on right now. All of these things are going on at the same time. God and his angels are moving with light. The devil and his angels are moving in darkness. So the demonic angels are moving on the earth now in coordination with the devil. Let's look at Genesis chapter 6, verses 1 to 4. Now it happened when men began to multiply on the face of the land, and daughters were born to them, the sons of God, demonic angels, saw that the daughters of men were beautiful and desirable, and they took wives for themselves, whomever they chose and desired. Then the Lord said, My spirit shall not strive and remain with men forever, because he is indeed flesh sinful, corrupt, given over to sensual appetites. Nevertheless, his days shall yet be 120 years. There were Nephilim, men of stature, notorious men on the earth in those days and also afterward, when the sons of God lived with the daughters of men and they gave birth to their children. These were the mighty men who were of old, men of renown, great reputation and fame. Ever since the fall of Adam and Eve, we are subject to desire darkness on the inside of us, and we have to fight that desire. These desires are both internal and external. We receive stimulation from our own inner corrupt nature and from external sources. What are these external sources? The dark angels that are walking this earth. If in the spirit realm right now, God could open up every one of our eyes and we see the angels and the demons that are around about us on a regular basis, you would live your life differently. But we have to start training ourselves to think at all times. These demonic angels and the good angels and the devil are present with us. This realm that we live in right now is not the real realm. It's not the real realm. We are living for a day 
when we go out of this realm that's corrupted. We don't have to deal with the, the sin that's in the earth that's been sown, the murders, the violence, the drugs, the gluttonies, all of the things that have just been sown over and over and over into the earth are not in that next realm, that realm that we go through when we step through the door of death. That realm is pure. That realm is uncorrupted. This is what we're living for, to go to. We're only going to be here temporarily, 120 years at most. After that is eternity, time without end. You have to make the decision today to live your life for eternity. You have to make the decision today. Are you going to live your life with God? Or are you going to live your life without God? Because if you're going to live your life without God, you're going to be grouped with a group of beings that hate God. And their job is going to be to torment you forever and ever without end, without fail. And they're going to do this just despite God. Their hatred is that real for God. So can you imagine being put in a place absent from love? Now we can feel love. We can feel some good. We can see people being good to each other. But imagine being in a place where there is no good at all and will never be. You're just in a place of constant torment repeatedly with no end in sight. You don't want to go there. You don't want to be in that place. You want to make the decision now to understand this is temporary. That other realm is where we want to go to. That other realm is where we want to be at so that we can live there in harmony, in peace, in total love. That should, be, that should excite you so much on the inside because there's not going to be a devil to have to contend with. There's not going to be pain. There's not going to be sorrow. You're just going to be in the presence of God for all of eternity. That's something that you need to see the bigger picture of in why we're fighting and what's going on here on this earth. You have a purpose that you have to fulfill. You have people that you have to reach. And you can't do that staying in sin. You can't do that being lazy. You can't do that wasting your time on things that are not anointed. You just can't. And, and you need to do a self-evaluation. How much time am I wasting when I could be doing something for God? Who do you think is providing the external stimulation to do evil? It's not the Holy Spirit that's telling you to commit sins. It's the devil and the demonic angels that are inspiring people to want to know about the hidden dark things. These demonic angels are telling people you too can be a god. Just follow this book, cast these spells, Listen to these special frequencies. Let me come into you, and I will give you supernatural human strength. I want to share some things with you from Dr. Rebecca Brown's book, He Came to Set the Captives Free. Dr. Rebecca Brown talks about the danger that these demonic angels pose. There is a phenomenal amount of power and intelligence in the spirit bodies of humans, especially when those spirit bodies are under the control of their soul. Satan has been working steadily down through the ages since the fall of Adam to gain the use of our spiritual bodies for his own evil schemes. So he's trying to trick us into using our spiritual bodies 
And in reality, he is the one that is using it and using us. Men's physical bodies are weak and really are of little use to Satan. But their spiritual bodies, under the conscious control of their souls, is very different. Satan's goal is to teach humans to, again, regain the conscious control of their spiritual bodies. Many humans have learned this hidden art. Remember that the word occult means hidden. Once a human learns how to consciously take control of their spiritual body, they can perceive the world, the spirit world, as well as the physical world. They can talk freely with demons, leave their physical bodies with their spirit bodies, and with full conscious awareness, go places and do things with what seems to the average human supernatural power. It is with their spirit bodies that the various witches and warlocks, without being physically present, would pull Elaine and Dr. Brown out of bed, throw them across the room, etc. Elaine and Dr. Brown were, uh, were unable to see them because their physical eyes cannot see into the spirit realm. Dr. Brown says God does not want his people to control their spirit bodies in such a manner. If we do so, not only would we be open to overwhelming temptations to sin, we would not be we would not need to be dependent upon him. And we would also be constantly aware of Satan and his kingdom. This results in much suffering as Satan and his demons will continuously harass the person. Look at the people that have been into new age things. They come through for deliverances. The demons offer them a special healing gift. The demons offer them a special word that they can give people that's from the psychic realm. And when the demons are finished using these people, they destroy them. They harass them. They torment them. We've had people come through and they sought deliverance and they had a special gift but they would not let it go because they felt like they had the right to be able to heal people in their own strength, using their own human spirit. This opened the door for the demons to stay in them. And when they decided that it was time for them to go, the demons harassed them. We had one gentleman that we were dealing with. These spirits would pick at his flesh and caused him to have sores, and he would itch and scratch, and nothing stopped the scratching. We got to a place and a point in, in his deliverance where we said, you have to give up this power. He refused. He absolutely refused because he wanted to be able to heal people. I don't know where he's at today. It's not worth your soul. It's not worth eternity. Sometimes what you think is a power is a demon, and it's destroying you. It's not from God. Let it go. Let God give you the true gift of healing, where it's not under your control, but it's under the control of the Holy Spirit. You can't heal anybody. You can't prophesy over anybody. You can't save anybody. It's not your anointing. It's not yours. It's by the Spirit, whomever the Spirit leads, whomever the Spirit draws, is what causes salvations to take place, is what causes prophetic. You, you, you just can't, if you, you can make it up and it won't do anything. You, you can manifest the healing in somebody and it won't do anything. What's better? to have your own manifestation or to have God's manifestation is something that will bring glory to God. We, we got to get this part right, too. We have to. We Christians must be very careful to ask the Lord to take complete control of our spirits. Many Christians fall into the trap of learning to, the, to control their own spirits, human spirits, this is the power that witches and warlocks like Elaine developed and used in the art of the occult. 
you can reach a point where you are so open, this is back to me, because you're so open to demons because of you learning how to operate your human spirit that you have an open door for them to come into you anytime they want to. The devil and his angels trick people into thinking they have a healing gift. God is the healer, not you. You're not supposed to operate your gift as the spirit moves. You're supposed to operate your gift as the spirit moves, not as you move. I want a lot of people in my life to be healed, but I'm not going to force my human spirit into someone and allow a demon to use that and send more demons into another person. This is sad, but many want, who want deliverance stop getting deliverance because they don't want to give up what they perceive as a gift. It's not a gift. It's a fallen angel tricking you into believing that you're doing something. Let's go to Revelations 12, 7 and 9. We're going to read this again because, again, this is tying things together. And war broke out in heaven, and Michael and his angels fought with the dragon, and the dragon and his angels fought, but they did not prevail. Nor was a place found for them in heaven any longer. So the great dragon was cast out, the serpent of old, called the devil and Satan, who deceives the whole world. He was cast to the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. In him was life and the power to, to bestow life. Oh, sorry. Um, that's a bleed over, Brett. Go to Revelations 12. This. Revelations 12, 3 is, And another sign appeared in heaven. Behold, a great fiery dragon having, dragon having seven heads and ten horns and seven diadems on his head. His tail drew a third of the stars of heaven and drew them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman who was given, who was ready to give birth to devour her child as soon as it was born. And I wanted to bring this out because there is an infinite number of angels, demonic angels, and an infinite number of good angels. But I wanted to point out that a third of the angels went with the devil. So we don't know how many that is. A third is a lot. So a third of those angels that fell, a third of the angels that fell went with Satan, and they're the ones who are floating around the earth doing their dirt, doing the things that they're doing. I read this backwards on purpose because I wanted you to see that the devil took a third of the angels with him. He was cast to the earth by God, and he didn't come alone. The demonic angels are also fighting against the God in us on a regular basis. Luke 10, 17 to 20. Then the 70 returned with joy, saying, Lord, even the demons are subject to us in your name. And he said to them, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Behold, I give you the authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Nevertheless, do not rejoice in this, that the spirits are subject, subject to you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. This is always the position that we as believers need to have. We don't ever want to allow pride to come in and take us over. We must always guard against saying that we are greater or more anointed or make comparisons between each other. When this occurs, the demonic angels are sitting there waiting for an opportunity to get you into the same deception that they're in. I'm just like God. We must be like Jesus and not have anything in common with the enemy. John 14, 30. I will no longer talk much with you for the ruler of this world is coming and he has nothing in me. So we saw in Job how the devil was watching us. He mocked God and said that we only serve him because he gives us stuff and keeps us from being attacked. Genesis 1, 26 to 31. Then God said, let us, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, make man in our image according to our likeness, not physical, but a 
spiritual personality and moral likeness, and let them have complete authority over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, the cattle, and over the entire earth, and over everything that creeps and crawls on the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image and likeness of God, he created him male and female. He created them. And God blessed them, granting them certain authority, and said to them, Be fruitful, multiply, and fill the earth and subjugate it, putting it under your power and rule over. Dominate the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, and every living thing that moves upon the earth. So God said, I behold, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is on the earth of the entire earth and every tree which has fruit yielding seed it shall be food for you. And to all the animals on the earth and to every bird of the air and to everything that moves on the ground, <coughs> to everything in which there is breath of life, I have given every green plant for food and it was so because he commanded it. God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good, and he validated it completely. And there was evening, and there was morning, a sixth day. God made us in his image. We need to understand that. That's, that's important. When the demons look at you, they see God, and they get angry. They, they get angry, they get hatred-filled, and you, you need to understand that. He made us to be like him in spiritual personality and moral likeness. This is our purpose, to be like him. God created us and gave us authority over the earth. Why? 1 John 4, 19, we love him because he first loved us. He loved us first, before we were even a thought. This is why we need to love him. This is why we need to do everything in our power to prove he is God by our life, by our testimony, by the things that we do. And we need to be able to tell the devil we're not following him. I don't want anything you have. I don't want any power you can give me. Because God loved me first, and you will never love me. People walk around in the delusion that, the, that they're, they're getting all these powers and they're getting closer to the devil and they're, they're casting all these spells and things like that and it's giving them more power. It just makes the devil hate you even more. Do you really, really understand that? He just hates you even more. Because here you are with the image of God inside of you and you're trying to be like the devil. And it just, it just, it's just a reminder. Look at the satanic rituals that are done, how they destroy the body. Look at the terrorist attacks. Look at the demonic activity that goes on with the violence. Why would you mutilate a body so? It's not enough anymore for people to kill. They got to go to the point of mutilating the body. This is demonic. This shows the complete hatred that the enemy has for God, and he's out to just destroy for no reason other than he's just bent. 1 John 4, 9 to 16. In this, the love of God was manifested toward us that God has sent his only begotten son into the world, that we might live through him. In this is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins, payment. Beloved, if God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. No one has seen God at any time. If we love one another, God abides in us, and his love has been perfected in us. By this we know that we abide in him and he in us, because he has given us of his spirit. And we have seen and testified that the Father has sent the Son as Savior of the world. 
Whoever confesses that Jesus is the Son of God, God abides in him, and he in God. And we have known and believed the love that God has for us. God is love, and he who abides in love abides in God, and God in him. We were created to be like God, to live for God, and be representations of him in this earth. In closing, John 3.16 to 21. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. This is open for everybody that wants to receive this. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Verse 18, he who believes him, who he who believes in him is not condemned, but he who does not believe is condemned already, because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation that the light has come into the world. And men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. For everyone practicing evil hates the light and does not come to the light, lest his deed should be exposed. But he who does the truth comes to the light, that his deeds may be clearly seen, that they have been done in God. Classic battle between light and darkness. This is the battle that we're in. Remember when we, where we started at. It was God first. God has no beginning, no end, and he brought his light into the world for us so that we could have that light inside of us. And here we are today with choices that need to be made. God is showing that the enemy, showing the enemy that we will love him because we are drawn to the light and we don't want darkness. We are created to show the enemy that God is right. We were created to show the enemy that light is more powerful than darkness. The enemy is a created being. He has a limited time on this earth to try and entice as many as he can to go into the pit with him. The enemy's destiny is set. Yours is too. God ordained for you to be with him. God made you light so that you could walk in the light with him. In the beginning, John 1, 1 to 5, before all time was the word, Christ, and the word was with God, and the word was God himself. He was continually existing in the beginning, co-eternally with God. All things were made and came into existence through him and without him. Not even one thing was made. That has come into being. In him was life and the power to bestow life. And the life was the light of men. The light shines on in the darkness, and the darkness did, under, did not understand it or overpower it or appropriate it or absorb it and is unreceptive to it. Where are you at today? Can you look at all of the reasons why and still say, I don't want to serve God? Can you look at the truths that he loved you first and say, I don't want anything to do with him? Maybe you've never thought about this before. Maybe no one's ever presented these things to you in this way so that you can understand the bigger picture and that you need salvation. If you want to give your heart to the Lord, the altar's open for that first. There's no shame. We all are on the same path. We're all going in the same direction. But if you realize now that you need God, the altar's open for you to come and to cry out before him and say, I need to learn some things. I need to understand the truth of who you really are. Maybe you need to recommit yourself. 
with a new understanding that these truths are real. The spirit realm is real. The altar's open for you to come and give your heart 